and welcome back to Madness in the Method, the Nicolas Cage podcast, where we talk about uh, Nicolas Cage. You know, we take a deep dive into his uh, his uh, illustrious career and try to figure out where it all went wrong. Nope, that was the last podcast. I, 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 well, the Adam Sandler podcast. That was the slogan for that one. But I guess it's kind of the same here. We haven't really discussed. What have we? Have we just? Excuse me. First of all, welcome to the show. <laughs> Let me introduce my friend and trusty co-host, Christopher. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. I started talking to myself. No, but I'm. I'm. I'm I guess I'm asking you. Um, what was what was the uh, overarching idea with doing this? This is just to discover Nicolas Cage as an actor, or? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mentioned that in an earlier episode that this was uh, my idea. Yeah. To to we talked after Adam Sandler, we talked about doing something similar with another actor or another yeah um, director or anything like that. And then I realized that Nicolas Cage is this behemoth in the movie industry, which everyone knows. Everyone has seen him in his, in some things. He's he's a big big sort of. I wouldn't say star anymore, but a, like a big name in the industry. Yeah. Um, but I realized that I haven't seen even a fraction of anything he made. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. I've seen. <clears throat> I see. I saw him in like his biggest uh, face when he did The Rock and yeah. those movies. His, his um, late nineties movies. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but then I just I don't know. Uh, and I that was the most just this thing. Who is he? <laughs> How was he, his career? What has he made? Is he a good actor? Is he a bad actor? I don't know. Okay. So it's more more of just exploring this person everyone knows, but I don't think many of people have seen a lot of his movies. No, yeah, I think yeah, very few have seen all of it. Some people have seen all the bad ones from like the two thousands and twenty tens. Some have seen the good stuff from like the nineties and eighties, but I don't think anyone has seen all of it. So I guess that's what we're yeah, kind of but... doing. But it, I, I would say it's probably not impossible, but very uh, difficult, at least, to find anyone who hasn't seen at least two of his movies. Oh yeah, sure. Everyone has seen a Nicolas Cage movie. That's that's yeah. part of the thing when you've made like a what does he have like two hundred credits on IMDb or something like that. Yeah, something yeah. like that. And <laughs> so yeah, that that's there wasn't this big question with Adam Sandler. That was the big question is. Is he worth the hate? Yeah. Um, is he a hack or is he actually good? Yeah. It, it, no such question in this one. For me, at least. Okay. It was more... The biggest question is, what has he made? <laughs> that was the biggest question I, that I yeah, had. Yeah. Well, I, I guess um, I, we, we've talked about... Uh, so far, it's uh, Valley Girl, Racing with the Moon, Rumblefish. Uh, last week was... What's it called? Bird, birdie, 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 right? And uh, so far, we've—I've uh, I, consistently liked everything. Um, yeah. You have been a little up and down. Yeah, uh, uh, but mostly positive. Yeah, yeah, mostly positive. Yeah. Um, but I think this week, I think we're gonna. This, this is the first. Um, I'm just judging from what you've said <laughs> off air. Uh, this is the first one where we we're not gonna be that positive. I think. Because, yeah, you know, this week probably. we watched uh, The Boy in Blue, um, a movie that was even harder to find than Racing with the Moon. Yeah, this one was, uh, it was even tougher. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it, it, it's got, like, there's, there's no info on the movie. The only trivia uh, regarding the movie is that the steamboat that you've seen a bunch of scenes... Is uh, an actual like functioning steamboat that still to this day, at least in 2006, when someone wrote that, is uh, taking tours all over Canada or whatever. That's yeah. it for trivia. <laughs> that is a very I don't know, forgotten movie, even more than the Racing with the Moon. Yeah. Um, but this one maybe is, deserves it. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say that it, there's. There's sort of a, a reason for it. Yeah, but let's let's quickly just go through the uh, the plot. It's a uh, bi- biopic biopic of of, of yes. Ned Hanlon, someone I'd never was, heard of. Yeah, I only think people in the uh, quote unquote uh, 
industry. I don't know if it's an industry even in, in that sport. Yeah. Uh, knows who is. Um, but yeah, it's. I didn't even realize it was a biopic uh, until I. I felt it in the pace. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because I, I was thinking, why did you try to fit so many things in? What's what's going on? It goes fast, and then, and that usually is a, is a big uh, tell that it's a badly made biopic. Yeah, yeah, because it's 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 a tip. It's a typical sports movie. Um, reminiscent <laughs> of and Rocky isn't a based on a true story, but re- very reminiscent of Rocky. Um, but this time, instead of having it be like boxing or, or like in Warrior, it's it's MMA or uh, you know hockey, some something fun and, and a, an exciting sport. No, it's about um, rowing or, or I don't I'm, I'm not, I don't know the lingo, but sculling or they are scullers yeah. the ones who row. It's those long uh, gangly rowboats where a bunch of people row in a straight line, and it's. Usually, I, I connect it to, like, preppy colleges and universities in America. Yeah, it has a... Not a big part, but it is a, a part of the social network. Oh, yeah, world. yeah, exactly. The the, the, the Winklevoss, Winklevoss twins are champion scholars. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and it is really... I understand now why no, I haven't seen any other movies about that sport. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's a very uninteresting sport to watch. Yeah, unless you're into it, you know. I guess, or even then, is it interesting to watch? Well, I, I, can, I can attest to, you know, that some sports can be boring, but if you're into it, you like it. I, 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 I like, um, what's it called? Speedway? You know, where uh, mm. motocross bikes just go around in a circle for like 10 minutes? Yeah. I think that's exciting, but I, I, can understand, I can understand why people don't think that's exciting. This is kind of yeah, similar, fair, I suppose. I, uh, I mean, fair. people cheer for like pool uh, matches so I guess there's trick shots involved uh, anyway <laughs> it's a movie about boat rowing and uh, Nicolas Cage plays the man who uh, was the first one or one of the first to use the sliding seat before that they used to grease up their pants and that's his big claim to fame I suppose other than winning a bunch of races in his career um and that's 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 what the movie's about. How he <laughs> became part of the sport after being like a, um, what, what do you call it? Boot bootlegger or I, I guess um, a smuggler, a, a boost smuggler. Yeah, I don't I don't know if it's a bootlegger or he just smuggles for people. I think Not he's really. involved in the like he he is he's the guy who delivers it while his friends uh, cook mm. it, so to speak. Yeah, so he works in Canada. Rowing boats to places and deliver <laughs> booze yeah. in the dead of night, Moonshine. and this is this has to be like during some provision era. Yeah, I, um, I think it's a thirties. Yeah. No, oh, wait. I don't know if Canada has the same provisions as uh, America. If it's the same. Yeah, years. I don't. I don't know. Maybe, no, wait. This anyway. must have been the twenties. Uh, either way, yeah. yeah. During the prohibition, and then he gets, and then he gets fined by this guy, and then he starts. Throwing. Yeah, he gets fined by uh, what's his name? Something, something McNaughton. Bill. Well, yeah, the uh, oh, the actor yeah. David Naughton. Yeah, and I was like, where do I know that guy from? And I started <clears> looking. <throat> is it, is it the guy from Gremlins? No. And then I looked it up. It's, <laughs> it's the guy from an American, American Werewolf, Werewolf in uh, in London, which I've I've never yeah. seen him in another movie. So I was like, oh, him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um. And yeah. Then it's uh. It's him winning some races, being being chastised for being uh, 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 a, a dirty, you know, low, uh, low uh, second class person, basically, because it's a it's kind of a high society uh, kind of sport. Yeah, as we, even though, as you said before, it is kind of a preppy sport. Yeah, with- but they do describe it in the beginning. They they describe it as something that both you know rich and poor can enjoy. So yeah, enjoy but not compete. In. I guess, yeah, I guess. Um, so uh, yeah, he has to struggle with uh, with uh, be, being being the outsider and, and and proving that he's he's just as good as those rich people, them rich folk. Um, and that's it. Yeah, but it goes, as I said, it goes so fast. The editing and the script and everything—it just. 
it just cuts from place to place to scene to scene to thing to thing. And you never really have time to think about what's happening. Uh, and I, I, I couldn't stand that. <laughs> yeah. I think the worst part was some somewhere in the beginning of the movie, well, first half of the movie, I think, <clears throat> where, uh, so they are invited to this rich guy's house. Yeah. Uh, played by Plummer. Yes, Christopher Plummer. First, Christopher yeah. Plummer. Yeah. Um, and he says that I'm gonna take. It's the, the classic thing of. The two up and comers with the the guy who hasn't competed before and his manager, the one who found yeah. him, and then this high shot manager comes in. I'll do a better job managing. You're gonna be a star, uh, kid. <sighs> yeah, and we've we've seen this a million yeah. times. Isn't that also in one of the Rockies that's happening? Um, uh, with the the guy, the. the Gym guy. It never, uh, ne- never really. He kind of sticks with with Mickey. There, it's like a subplot in the fifth movie um, mm. that uh, that a promoter wants to uh, 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 book a fight with Rocky, and then he then he books it with with his rival instead. You know. Um, oh, okay. But he never really does it in the other Rocky movies. Yeah. But it's a very true. Oh yes. Thing. Oh yes. I mean, uh, look at uh, basketball. I can only think of parody movies. Dodgeball. <laughs> Uh, it's it's a it's a classic thing in sports yeah, movies. I mean, if they are in parodies movies, they're already yeah, very cool. Y- yes, so. exactly. <laughs> uh, but so they are at this farm and talk with Pl- Christopher Plummer. Uh, they reject him, and then hard cut. They are now on a carriage going away from the farm. Yeah. Uh, and Nicolas Cage character Ned says uh, tells his manager that oh saw that that uh, that young lady. She she likes me, yeah. and Bill the manager says, oh, "You don't have any shot with him and with her." And Ned says, "Oh, I do." Hard cut. They're in a boat, uh, with Ned and the girl, yeah. on a sort of a date thing, and then hard cut. They're now at a, a garden party, where he uh, Ned is insulted by some Harvard guy and punches him, and the girl, Margaret, blows off on him and throws him out. Hard cut. Oh, he can't race now because he's sad and heartbroken and drunk. Yes, what? That... This is like four minutes. It's just, what happened? Yeah, it's like the, the the beginning of the second act of this movie was very rushed, it felt like. I noticed that as well. Um, and and I, I think they really just, they, they needed, they had like a, a list of of, um, uh, like real life occurrences that they needed to put in the movie, mm. but they really wanted to focus more on the actual sport. So, like, just just mm. put it in the middle and you get it over with, so we can get to the race. Yeah, it really felt like this movie was written. Well, the script was written from uh, the first drafted uh, script was just a a board of bullet points. Yeah, probably, yeah. It really <laughs> felt like yeah. that was like these fifteen things in his life needs to be in there and then we just so it's more like scenes there's it's not a, a story just scenes contained scenes after each other yeah there there is a lot of that it feels like they yeah yeah they they just wanted to like put these moments from his career in there and it doesn't really have to fit together whatever you know it's uh, you know it's life it's not a movie <clears throat> yeah and it, it's it's very jarring and well, I personally, at least, I didn't feel anything because I I didn't have time no, to feel no. anything or or care about anyone or understand anything that's happening. It's just so fast and just all the time. So uh, I couldn't get into this movie at all because of the tempo. No, yeah, I I I I was I, it was the same, and I was I was I was almost. Because it's supposed to be, it's it's like a it's like a biography slash drama movie, but I was laughing a lot, like at the movie. Oh, at the movie? Yeah. Not no, not from not with the movie. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, because there were, especially in the beginning, like the first scenes before he goes to Philadelphia to compete in his first race. Yeah. That chunk is very comedic. Oh There's sure, a yeah. A lot of there comedic is, things. There, there is humor in it, but you know, and that that's yeah. that was fine. But I I found more the the the, the constant like uh, the the poor sportsmanship in in this sport. 
Like people constantly sabotaging, trying to like uh, uh, buy people to take a dive, uh, 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 stabbing each other in the back. It was like all over the place. I mean, they literally they literally broke uh, David Norton's arm or shoulder because they thought he was uh, a Nicolas Cage character, Ned Hanlon. Because and they were sent by that the the Knox guy, Christopher Plummer's guy. She's like, what? You, you you can't just break someone's arm and like in in. On an open street. It's not like they were trying to do it in secret. No, they just... Well, there's the guy who's going to row. we got to break his arm. Yeah, it was very <laughs> weird and uncons- inconsistent. Because then, at a later point in the movie, uh, Hanlon gets banned for life to ever compete in America because he rammed a guy. Yeah. <laughs> but no, breaking arms and sabotaging boats, that's, that's fine. That's fine. You know, it's part of the sport, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, and I, I found that very humorous, though. Them, like, r- running from the... Fir- first of all, running from the police who are aided by the priests cause they, uh, uh, <laughs> back in Canada, and then running from hoodlums trying to break their arms and beat them up. <laughs> it, it, it was a very, a very strange uh, world these people inhabited. <laughs> yeah. And it, it could have worked if we just had some... If we just slowed down and just... Maybe have two races in the movie, not like eight uh, or whatever. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know if this story could have worked. I mean, it's not that exciting. It's a guy who wins a couple of races and he marries a girl. <laughs> I mean, sure. I mean, you can say like you can you can make you can make exciting movies out of basically anything as long as you know what you're doing. But Aww. some stories are just you know they're too uh, regular. Yeah, that's fair. But I mean, if we could have gotten into the sports a bit, maybe... Yeah, maybe. Showed some sportsmanship and showed... I don't know. And the music was very, very bad. Yes, or the score. it was all over the, the score place. Was, oh, it, I would say... It, was, it felt like stock. They, they had like... They, they stock music and they just picked the best they could find in a selection of... 50 different tracks. Yeah, because some... That was sort of... Sometimes it kind of felt like contemporary 80s film music, sort of. But yeah, sometimes it felt like Looney Tunes jingles, like when they were running mm. around and falling over, like... And then, towards the end, they, they were started incorporating a lot of wah-wah pedals and guitars. It was like, <laughs> oh, is this from the 70s? What's going on here? They didn't, they didn't pick one genre of music. Um... And since the movie takes place in the 70s, or uh, the 20s, maybe do some more era-appropriate music, but now there's just, we'll do a little bit of this, yeah. a little bit of New Wave, a little bit of whatever that is, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was inconsistent, is what this movie is, all over every every aspect of the movie. Even the acting. Um, most of the actors were fine, Except for... They did what they could with the material they got. Yes. Except for, I thought, um, the girl he eventually marries, Margaret, right? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Played by Cynthia Dale. She was bad. Not not all the time, but she was the worst of them. She had this... It felt... Yeah, I agree, but I think that felt like it was the direction that was the uh, issue, not... That might be part of it. Her. Yeah, that or the she or was the very... She was very over the top, cartoony rich girl. Yeah. Very. Oh, how could she do this? A lot of those things, very over the top, and I think that's felt like the direction. Yeah. Because uh, at moments when she actually played a real person <laughs> and not this stereotype, <laughs> she was pretty good. I mean, in the specific, specifically in the. Uh, the day after scene, she was not much in it, but I think she was pretty good in that one. Uh, after they, after she runs away to Ned. Ah, yes, yes, th- yeah, she's uh, good in that yeah. scene. In that scene, she's pretty. She good. felt a little more uh, relaxed. And... Exactly, and then the scene where I think the only meaningful thing the character did in the entire movie, um, when she sort of bumbled into the... when they were signing contracts. Ah, yes. And, and she gave Ned a lot of pointers that maybe I should have a lawyer looking over yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, it's just... just 
these woman things that just words just come and I can't stop them <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it was pretty good in those two scenes. So it felt like she could act. She was just directed not to. Yeah. Um. Uh, I I read some reviews and people said the similar thing, but they said that it it could have it, probably because uh, the the script didn't really. Let them do the, the the like the characters are written like cartoons almost. Mm, um, very much. Yeah, uh, Nicholas Cage. Let's talk about Nicholas Cage. I at first I thought, you know, oh, he's he's pretty good in this, um, and I, this was like his first like proper leading role um, after after having been like second build to to um, uh, to in, in Birdie and in Racing with the Moon and Rumblefish. Uh, I guess yeah, Valley Girl was a leading role, but you know this was he he was the the big you know star in this one, so to speak, and it yeah he was it feels according to the poster at least it feels like he was sort of a selling point yes yes, um, so so to 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 start off it was like yeah he's pretty good, um and he seems to like try to act be more regular there was no there was no big uh, Nicolas Cage moment in this. Um, that 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 we've seen in the other movies, he tried to, he tried to just be a regular actor, and that's you know it's fine. But then there were some scenes where I don't know if if it was because he was trying to sound Canadian, but he can't at all. He he, <laughs> he says like, "Oh, where are you going, a?" Eh? But he says it without any sort of like dialect or infliction. It's just he's just oh. speaking like Nicolas Cage, but saying a. Eh? Like, that's not well, Canadian. I, I honestly, <laughs> I honestly didn't even notice those things. So it was, uh, he did have one sort of uh, Nicolas Cage outburst though. Uh, when they, in the beginning of the movie, when he rode to the steamboat to go to Philadelphia, yeah. and he decides to tro- throw his new manager over. Oh the board. yeah, uh, sure, yeah. He, do- it, he does a few Nicolas Cage uh, yells. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, that's right, yeah. Ca- yeah. Chaos there, uh, but th- that's about that's it. About that's it, yeah. about it. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think like he he saw this as his chance to like uh, maybe not call it his big break, but like ooh my my ch- my chance to shine in a in a leading role. But then it was this movie that no one cared about. It got because he got terrible reviews. I, I that that was the one thing you could also read about on on Wikipedia because on on um, IMDb there's nothing except for the steamboat thing. And on Wikipedia, all you could find was um, that it was uh, poorly reviewed at the time. That was it. There's nothing else yeah. about the movie. Nothing about behind the scenes or why they wrote it because of this and that. No, it's just the movie was made and then it came out and nobody cared. It made no money and then everybody forgot about it. Uh, there's one interesting review I, I looked over. There aren't many yeah. on IMDb yeah. either. Uh, but there's one which is quite interesting because it starts with "I'm actually in this movie." Oh, <laughs> uh, so there's uh, someone who was an extra in the background. Uh, so I would really like to be able to give it an excellent review. I have to be honest though, the script is pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> it gives it four out of ten. Yeah, well, at least they're so, honest. <laughs> yeah, but there are a few ten out of tens. But I, I mean, no, every movie is a ten out of ten for someone. I guess, but there are. I, I I've had this uh or I've 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 asked this question to myself for many years. Like mm. you, you pick a random I don't know, pop song or whatever, like is there actually someone who thinks this is the best song ever? And you can do the same yes. with movies, like do you think someone thinks this the boy in blue is their favorite movie of all time? Do you think that person 100%. exists? Definitely. Okay, alright. I I definitely. Uh yeah, I was I also, but I usually think of bands. You know, when you hear that, that's one hit wonder song oh, from yeah. that band made four albums and you never heard of. Uh, that there is someone out there. This, this is my favorite band. <laughs> it's always been with me. I listen to them them all the time. Yeah, imagine, imagine dragons really mean something to me. They're my favorite band. <laughs> really? All right. I mean, okay. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking more like Scooter. <laughs> well, like, well, Scooter they have a they have a dedicated fan base. Or at least had. I don't think they're active. Anymore. Okay, they have. Okay, I, yeah, I they were know. they were big into uh, the, the 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 hard hard style scene or whatever. 
techno scene. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I see yeah, what so, you mean. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, there's uh, yeah, there's not much behind the scenes to be found at all. As no, you said. nothing basically. Um, and I, I couldn't find any interviews with any of the cast or anything. No, either. No. Um, uh, one thing I found a little in. Um, um, interesting is, and I'm not sure. This might be like grasping at straws, but one of the <laughs> one of the production companies that were that were involved with making the movie, first of all, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation is, is involved, CBC. Um, so this is like made for Canada. So mm. I guess he's some sort of hero in 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 Canada. Actually, I actually haven't looked him up, other than what I what they told me in the movie. So. Yeah, he has like statues and stuff. Okay, so I can see why they why they wanted to make the movie. But then also Telefilm Canada, and then Regatta Productions. And I read that in in the credits of the movie, it looked like it said uh, Regatta Association. So I was like, oh, it's some sort of rowboat association involved in making the movie. That makes sense. Yeah, but it was, here it does. here on um, Wikipedia it says Regatta Productions, so that could just be a production company. Specifically for this movie, I'm not sure. Yeah, it, it very much felt as a movie that was ordered. Yeah, in a, in some way that someone either very into rowing or either or very Canada looking for a hero or or something. Someone said we need a movie about this because I, both the writer and the director hasn't really done anything else. Yeah, nothing um, of a... interesting. Yeah. And and I, I I doubt that they any of them were um, feeling that this was something that needed to be made <laughs> that they were they were burning for this story to be told it didn't feel like that uh, while watching the movie no so it, it really felt like a, a movie made for for a, a reason more than art yeah yeah and, and the director has mainly made TV uh, shows. Uh, like yeah. episodes of TV shows or TV movies. Um, he has a few few movies from the seventies, and then The Boy in Blue. Oh, and one a movie called The Amateur, whatever that is. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it almost maybe that Ned Hanlon was. I don't know. He was gonna be celebrated in some way, like maybe it's like fifty years since he did the thing, and then they made a movie for that event. It felt sort of in that vein. Yeah. Well, but sh- shouldn't they have cast an, uh, a Canadian actor then? I'm just thinking, thinking out loud. <laughs> like... Well, I mean, they probably they got people because uh, they were good, good names. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Uh, I mean, they got Christoph, Christopher Plummer and yeah, that's true, Cage. Yeah. And Chris- so that's what made me think uh, this could be a good movie because it, it got Christopher Plummer. He's a classy actor. He hasn't done a lot of crap, oh. you know. But well, I guess sometimes you. You have to hit, hit, hit a low point. And then I got to point out, because I'm, I'm looking up the writer now. I'm wondering if he was hired uh, specifically because in 1973, he wrote a movie called The Girl in Blue. Could there be a connection? I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm just I'm speculating here. Uh, <laughs> let me look it up. Uh, has nothing to do with um, uh, rowing, though. But still, you know. Yeah. This, they thought, hey, he wrote a movie called Girl in Blue. <laughs> this is called Boy in Blue. Perfect. I mean, it could be something what? there, right? Right? We yeah. just need a writer. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. But but I got to say, though, uh, just the, the ending uh, text, because this movie has also a. That, that, word, that was the first thing that worried me when they had this text crawl at the, at the start. It wasn't long, but when they had, like, setting scene text crawl, that's usually not a good. Um, yeah, they they had to they had to explain the sport instead of just showing us. Yeah, it's just like, uh, uh. but then they ha- and then they had this what happened after the movie crawl at the end, and I gotta say that's very impressive. No matter what sport it is, having two hundred consecutive wins. Oh yeah. that's that's impressive in any. World. He defended the whatever it defended is. the world championship for like years. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty impressive. So, I mean, he's probably a very impressive guy. Imagine, it, just imagine not... if they would have showed us that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, is there a, is there a story here? Is there a movie? You, you said that some stories can't be made interesting. Yeah. 
is there something because the the regular when making a biopic usually yeah uh specifically if it's a movie that's only one half hour which this yeah. is um you pick one specific event yes. uh and focus the entire movie on that uh in this movie they made they tried to fit more or less the entire life yeah it's uh, fr- from from him entire... being discovered to him winning the world championship yeah and that's a little too Maybe if it was three hours, it could have worked. But I don't know. But is there an event in here in this movie that you think they should have focused on, and that could have worked? Um, I I think honestly, if you if you um, if you uh, uh, cut and paste a little bit and and uh, st- not stick so much to uh, to what actually happened, if the sliding seat was what made him win the world championship, that could have been something. Like like yeah. him first rowing like everyone else like a regular you know using the grease on his pants, um and him like winning he's good, but then uh he the, the competition builds up and like ah we gotta we gotta get better we gotta get stronger and then the old guy who built the sliding seat he's part of the team already he's been part of the team for a while now because they barred his boat or whatever, um and he's working on something now like it's not it's not finished yet. And then for, you know, some random competition before the World Championship, he introduces the sliding seat. Um, it's like, mm. this is going to give you whatever he says, 40 yards to the mile or whatever he says. I don't remember. Um, well, that's a, a very free uh, interpretation. Oh, yeah. Of yeah, 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 absolutely. It's, it's no longer historically accurate at all, no. basically. Because <laughs> I think it could have worked if they, the first, the first race he did. Yeah. Uh, with the sliding seat, just the first one. If that was the end of the movie, but then they couldn't, they couldn't fit the love story in there. No, no. Yeah, Daddy could. Oh. He had another girl. Yes. In the okay. Good. I, I was waiting for when we could bring that up. Um, he was kind <laughs> of an asshole because he 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 goes over to wherever they were racing somewhere in America. Um, mm-hmm. and he he leaves. What was her name? Dulcy, Ducey. D- D- Dulcy, I think. Let's see here. Yeah, I think Dulcy. Dulcy, yeah. He's she, they say Dulcy, yeah. um, and they they seem to be very ha- happy with each other, um, but he he leaves her behind because you know he he's got to go to to race and the police are after him, um, and then he wins this race, and he sees the the uh, uh, you know, Christopher Plummer's daughter. Uh, but before be, before this, we see Dulcie arriving with the steamboat to like cheer him on, like "Oh, I'm here now, yoo-hoo. So she's standing in the crowd while he's getting his uh, his medal for winning, and and while she's watching him and like being this uh, uh, the the adoring I don't know girlfriend, whatever you call it, he's just looking at another girl like, "Hey, wanna come with me?" <laughs> and I was like, "Dude, Dulcie's in the <laughs> audience. Calm down." But and then she's just like, whatever, guy. you know, yeah, I'm going to go after this girl. And, oh, Dulcie's just going to marry uh, David Norton's character, Bill. They're, they're married now, later in the movie. I'm like, what? What happened? I, the the, yeah, Dul- the yeah, Dulcie I mean... character felt like she got like pushed to the side because the real love story was with uh, <laughs> Margaret, Cynthia Dale's character. It's like, what? Uh, yeah, but that's also... It, it... <laughs> They never even explain it. They only show that they are fooling around, more or less. They never say that they are together. No, I in guess. A way. I guess. And 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 she seems very. Uh, if you're looking through throughout the movie, she seems very laid back and not really. There's never a conflict there. No, no. I, I, sure. And, and, I was just. And, and so, so I, I think, I think that's what they were going. Well, I hope that's what they were going for. <laughs> Um, but I, that's another point. It's actually quite refreshing. There was some regular tropes in the romantic so subplot that they didn't do, or well, they did the opposite. Uh, one was this when they are in the stable, uh, Ned and this the new girl, the, the rich uh, Christopher Plummer knocks uh, his niece. Yes. Um. So Ned, at this point, is is. Living with the Knox yeah. and while training, because yeah. uh, he has uh, become the manager, and then uh, and there's this thing with Ned and Margaret that Margaret 
is interested but not interested is a very weird thing. Uh, we don't know if Ned just believes she's interested no. or if she is. But then uh, she comes out, comes out and talk with him, and <laughs> he says, "I love you," which he said several times. And <sighs> she says, "I gotta come clean with you. I was never interested in you. I only did it for my uh, uncle's sake. He told me to do it to be nice to and you." Then we get, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and as that the regular trope of how could you have done this, blah blah blah, you, the thing, yeah, uh, the 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 bet thing yeah. that is in movies. Uh, but he just, yeah, I don't think I know that. That's obvious. Of, but I don't care. I think you like me anyway. Yeah, and I do. And I, think, I do. But we and can't. I think that's kind of I, I I liked how he just spit in the face of that trope because <laughs> it's a very tired trope. Yes, and I think and the same thing with the the. Dolce then, uh, Dolce, uh, that she just, well, it doesn't have to be a big deal that he met the new girl and, and got a new thing. She never came back and was the the mad ex-girlfriend. She was, oh, no, yeah, and move I, on with my yeah, life. I was, I was and, glad they didn't do that. It, it was just yeah, it was and, just that first scene when she's standing in the crowd. And she, he's yeah. like, hey. I was like, whoa. Hey, my guy, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> just wait until <laughs> she's again, not looking at least. I don't think they portray that at all in the movie. No. But if you look on the his um, uh, uh, Vicky Vicky side, he's like nineteen there. So oh, okay, well, yeah. so all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so so I think that was quite quite interesting. But again, uh, if we just uh, how I would make a movie, just the that the first act maybe first first and second act was just the smuggling thing yeah. that he's development of the 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 village and his friends does he have friends uh, and and development of Dolce can be the love interest and all these things and uh Bill the manager he can be this recurring character that tries to get him into this and then the la- the third act or the second and third act could be the actually actually training and doing it, and then we can end with him finishing the first race, and then we can have another text crawl at the end and saying he went on to be the world champion. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I think that could have worked. That could yeah, it could have worked. Like it's a, it, like in 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 the in the history books, it's a minor win, but for him it was a big win because it was his first like at, proper win. Yeah, yeah it could have made something like that. Yeah. Because that's one of the biggest issues in this movie, that it feels like there isn't no real conflict uh, after the first win. No, not really. Felt like, it felt like manufactured conflicts. That, yeah, there was this this one guy that he, he said some bad words, and ooh, now, now Ned really wanted to beat him. Uh, yeah, okay... Yeah. And Knox, this this money grubbing manager, he he bet a lot of money, but now Ned maybe not gonna win, so the rich guy's gonna lose a lot of money. What what's gonna happen then? And it's just I, I don't care. Yeah, and then at and all. Tr- trying to uh, trying to like have an uh, uh, an antagonist an, an antagonist rower scholar in in uh, what's his yeah. name the the Australian guy uh, Trickett something Edward Trickett. Yeah. It's like yeah. now. Didn't work because he's only in the last like fifteen minutes of the movie. Yeah, so so it felt more or less like it was sort of smooth sailing for for Ned yeah. throughout the movie. You... The only issue he actually had was uh, uh, motivation. Yeah, motivation and, that he, and, he... and a little a little bit of of uh, tr- tr- trouble with uh, with his love life because you know I can't I can't be with you. You're you're a, you're a low life, and I'm high society. But they kind of got over that pretty quickly too. So I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, I think it. it, it there was again. There's not an interesting story no. because there are no interesting challenges. Yes. Uh, the first one was an interesting challenge, but they it was got brushed aside because we have sixteen other races to go through. Do you know what? Do you know um, what it what it felt like? It felt like um um. Like one of those 
like not quite documentary, not quite movie that you saw in in school. It was made like a like a like a like learning material for schools, like the story of Ned Hanlon for like some some history class, you know, but with a slightly higher budget because they had Nicolas Cage. But I mean, yeah. it was just a retelling of his story. It wasn't really a movie with ups and downs and the second act low point and. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Kind of felt like that's, that. <laughs> and that's sort of what, what that that's could definitely be a part of the the thing we talked about that someone ordered this. Yeah, movie. yeah. Could definitely be for for learning that some guy decided that people need to know more about Ned Hanlon and today's youth won't read books. <laughs> we have to make a movie. Yeah. Uh Yeah, definitely something like that. Because it it, ha- it has that feeling, especially s- since it ends with like s- telling you like, oh, and, and later he went on and do this and this and this. You know, mm. he was good at this, and yeah, and and there's no yeah, no stakes, no no um, no emotional roller coasters. It's just a retelling of what happened. Oh, and this is how mm. this 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 is the story of how Ned Hanlon won his first world championship. Oh, okay, all right, bye. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was very much as I suspected. We, I don't remember if I talked about it on air or off air last time, but I, I felt like this movie was, was I was not looking forward to. Yeah, and I, I, I was I was feeling there was because I said that there was going to be a few movies here at the beginning where I I I have I think they're going to be boring, not interesting. Uh, and uh, and I said, uh, Birdie, the boy in blue, pay is who got married. Yeah. Up until up and up until and counting, Peggy Sue got married. I have not had high hopes. Okay. <laughs> but this was the first one that actually uh, wasn't that good because, as stated, like we have given some good uh, scores. Before. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I I thought every movie you watched have been consistently good, and um, we've talked about this last time as well. Uh, even though I gave Rumblefish a seven, I I would definitely like give it a uh, like an eight now. So every movie has been mm. at least good or great, but this one yeah. no. I, I gotta say, <clears throat> I gotta say though, um, there was one thing I liked about the movie, and I saw other people mentioning that as well, uh, pointing that out. And I thought the, the cinematography was good, the camera work was good, not like great, but it stuck out because the rest of the movie was like huh, whatever. But I mean the the scenes of him like um uh some of the slow motion shots when he's he's rowing it's there's this nice nice n- good lighting um good composition um there's something there's something I I don't know if it's just because as we're recording this summer is slowly rolling in here in Sweden and I have been like been in a better mood uh than I've been <laughs> uh, as of late uh cuz this movie it felt like it felt summery somehow. I mean, it takes place in the summer, but I, I, I got this the summer vibes from it, and especially then from the the cinematography, um. So I I I enjoyed that part. I I felt very cozy every time they were out uh, rowing in those little thin little boats, and it's nice to see them because it's very. It's almost like they're sitting on the water. There's so little actual boat there. I enjoyed that. But the rest of the movie, eh, whatever. <laughs> I think cinematography is, is as I don't know. There should be a term for it. Uh, there, it's it's very uh, common in drama movies that it just it does its job. Yeah, it's it's uh, workmanlike. Yeah, yeah, it it's. I didn't notice it at all, and I I mean that's that's the thing with these these kind this kind of cinematography is just it does its job yeah. you don't think about it uh but it's not that interested there's two, two people the things, two people talking in a room film them okay yeah, yeah. things are in frame yeah. nothing is really difficult to see or understand yeah yeah that's, yeah sure and and I, I think that was in this movie i, I the, the the editing that was another matter that thing was yeah the pacing weird. was all over the place yeah, but again, I don't know if, how much that's editing and how much that's script. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, and we will never find out because there is no information about this movie. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so so I I didn't high high I had high hopes and and I'd say they achieved them. <laughs> okay, okay. 
So, what, what did you uh, what do you think? Um, thought about a movie I, before? I I was kind of um, indifferent. I d- I didn't think it was going to be great. Um, but I thought it could. Like I said before, I because Christopher Plummer was in the 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 cast, I was like, so there there could be something here because he usually is in good stuff. But mm. so I, I I had my hopes up a little bit, but no, nah. No, that's bad. Not bad. It wasn't bad. It was bland yeah. and lacking. So, interesting thing uh, regarding this. So, Valley Girl and Rumblefish. Yes. He made in 1983. Yes. Racing with the Moon and Birdie. He made in 1984. The Boy in Blue and Pegasus Got Married. He made in 1986. Yeah. So he made no movies 1985. He took a year off. Well, yeah. I wonder why. Unless that's a there are movies that we removed. Um, I don't think we removed maybe. any early on, except for, except for that fast, TV fast pilot time, he fast, made. Yeah, and Fast Times. Oh, Fast Times. Yeah, but that's before. That's eighty two. So. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So what? What are you gonna give it? What score are you gonna give it? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, it's gonna be a seven. Oh yeah, yeah I was thinking to myself, no, because, no, no, because of the cinematography. No, this is not a seven. <laughs> this is, uh, I would say, this is. It's straight down the line for me. It's a five. It's it's whatever. It's bland. Five. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm I'm gonna give it a four. Uh, I think it's it's below bland. Okay. It's 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 bland, and I can't really see anything any worth in the movie. Uh, there's nothing that is offensive or super bad, but there's nothing to take away from yeah. it. I will forget this movie in like two weeks. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I have mostly forgotten it at this point, and I saw it. An hour ago. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I saw it earlier today. Um, <laughs> and it's sta- it's starting to fade, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, next week, Pegasus got married. Yes. I'm, uh, a, I'm, a, I'm looking forward to that one. I haven't seen it, but I know of it. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it is a... Um, hold on. Let me double check. So I'm not lying. Yeah, it's a Francis Ford Coppola movie. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You haven't. You don't know. You don't. You haven't watched any trailers or anything. No, I have. I have read the synopsis oh, okay. and I've heard of the movie. Um, so you know, there's a there's a twist to the. It's not just a romantic comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know that. Uh, but I think it's gonna be a kind of a, a sort of a standard '80s comedy. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, there's a twist, but yeah. I I'm mostly interested this... because. Um, like it's it's a it's a it's a Francis Ford Coppola movie that isn't The Godfather or that that <laughs> isn't Apocalypse Now, and I because every, everyone has seen those movies, but he's made so many other movies that people don't talk about. So I I was on a quest last year to to um, to watch more Coppola movies, but I only watched one oh, of them. Okay. So, but I I was go I was going to watch Peggy Sue, but I guess. It, it, um, Fate intervened, so I I didn't. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm not that interested because I I am not a big fan of Transport Coppola. Uh, generally, I I don't. I'm not that interested in his style of movies okay. or content. Um, yeah, I I think that uh, Godfather is kind of a boring movie. I don't like it, uh, okay. and uh, I, I still haven't seen uh, Apocalypse oh, Now. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not really a selling point for yeah, me. Yeah, okay. Well, and uh, how about this then? What, what else has he done? Jim Carrey is in this movie or in in uh, Peggy Sue Got Married. Eh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, cool. I just saw that now. Cool. Oh. Uh yeah, I'm just checking what what else has he done? Has he done anything else that I've seen? Well, you did like I Rumblefish. Enjoy. Yeah, Rumblefish. Uh, I like Coppola. Rumblefish. That's I really like that. Um, he made a uh, like in the sixties. He made a movie called like uh, Dimension. Made a Dracula movie. Uh, well, yeah. it's that's good, right? It's it's basic. It's very just. It's it's one of those that that's Francis Ford Coppola for me. 
he makes uh like he takes kind of an uh uninteresting boring concept and then he makes the best that he can with it but there's that's a but it's still a boring concept uh that's that's my thing that i don't like the things the, the stories he made it's like oh the italian mobster okay cool i don't care about oh. that dracula have you heard of dracula you, yeah, I've heard of Dracula. But, uh... Vietnam War, do you know it was bad? Yeah, I, yeah, it was bad, I know. Yeah, but I, I, I gotta... <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here and defend Apocalypse Now like that, but I, I just gotta <laughs> say, there's a difference between Vietnam War movies and Apocalypse Now. It's... it's It, it yeah, is an experience. I, I, like, I, I mean, I know. I, I, I know more or less every story beat in the movie without oh, actually okay. ever seeing it. So, I, I, I know bad but it's just that's why i haven't seen it because it's just yeah it's vietnam war great i didn't realize this when we were making the list but he made the cotton club one of the movies we skipped from that was from 1984 i don't know i just Mm. saw that now like oh he made that okay (laughs) um but i mean he made the movies i watched or have seen that isn't godfather um, he made a movie in the 60s called Dementia 13, which is kind of a horror movie almost. Pretty good. Um, and then he made, right after The Godfather, he made a movie called The Conversation with, uh, what's his name? Um, Gene Hackman, who's like a paranoid, uh, uh, uh he like, uh, he records conversations for like the police, whatever that's called. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. and that's, uh, it's, it's like... I, it's hard to explain. It's like a conspiracy theory movie, um, and and Gene Hackman is just super paranoid. It's a very good. That's a very good movie. So he has done. He has done good stuff. It's uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Obviously, I mean, I I'm not saying he's bad. I'm just saying I'm not interested oh, sure. in anything yeah, else. Yeah, sure, so sure. That's it's not. I'm, it's not that I'm saying he's a bad director. He's, a, he's an amazing director. He just picks weird boring stories to drink. That's that's all I'm <laughs> yeah, saying. Yeah. Um that's uh, like uh n- n- never mind. Well back to the Right, movie yeah, we're yeah. We'll we'll, we'll talk more about um, that next week when we actually watch yeah. uh, Peggy Sue got married. <laughs> yeah. Uh so yeah, um that's the boy in blue, a very uninteresting movie and very forgotten movie. Yes. Uh and for which is understandable. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, so yeah, it was very difficult to hard to find. That I I don't think we're gonna find any other movie that's this hard. To find. No, it it can't be. I mean, you 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 couldn't even. And I hope no authorities are listening. You, there wasn't even a way to pirate the movie. Like no. we couldn't break the law if we wanted to. <laughs> there was there was there wasn't even a mention <laughs> on the internet of this movie. Barely. Yeah, it's the IMD, IMDb page and the Wikipedia page. That's, it. that's yeah. about it. Uh, there is a song I think called "Boy in Blue" or "Band" or something. That's that come out. Oh comes yeah, up yeah, a lot yeah, though, yeah, but... yeah. I got a lot of that. Yeah. yeah so it's yeah. But uh, probably in probably in some 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 kind of uh, uh, public service archive in Canada. Oh yeah, They're, they have exists. some VHS copies of it there, definitely. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, so people listening to this you didn't miss anything. No, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, you you can skip this one. It's uh, it's neither here nor there. Pretty bad. <laughs> uh, hope hopefully next week is good though. I'm I'm looking forward to uh, Peggy Sue got married. Um, yeah, uh, I I I hope I'm uh, surprised. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll wrap it up there. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for listening, uh, either on YouTube or if you're getting the proper uh, uh, podcast experience on Spotify or iTunes or whatever um, remember if, if you like if you like the show uh, subscribe or follow give five stars and if you want to hear the show uh, a week in advance just look up uh, don't make a scene on patreon there'll, there'll be links everywhere um, and you can support the show for as little as three dollars a month and you get um, first of all, you get exclusive episodes of my other podcast, the Spoiler Cast. Uh, you get exclusive videos. You get to decide what we talk about on the Spoiler Cast, and you get Madness in the Method a week early, every episode. But that's gonna have to be it for this time. 
once again, thank you so much for listening, and uh, we'll see you next week with Peggy Sue Got Married. But until then, have a good one. Bye. Bye, everyone. The Nicolas Cage Podcast is part of Please Don't Make a Scene. It's produced, directed, and edited by Tobias Vidian. Hosted by Tobias Vidian and Christopher Villian, after an original idea by Christopher Villian. Executive producer is Annika Vidian. And a big thank you to all our sponsors over at Patreon for keeping the show going. Laura Kinney, Rasmus Jonsson, Mom and Dad. If you also want to join our Patreon, you can at www.patreon.com slash don't make a scene. Help us keep the show going.